Lahard's Sunday scoreline. Your music, your sports. With thanks to the full range of Skoda vehicles at Lahard's, the home of Skoda in Kilkenny. Lahard's.ie. Welcome back to KCLR Sunday Scoreline. Just coming up into the last two hours of the show. We're at we're at half time. We're coming back out onto the pitch. Uh, we've covered a lot of stuff today. The sports show with no sports to talk or to report on, but we can sure talk about. But uh, we've been saved from using that tagline by the Belarusian Premier League that is going ahead. It's uh, bringing a lot of joy to folks who still need their soccer fix. And uh, it's up on YouTube for free. And we've been giving out reports. Steven Minsk is the KCLR official team that I... I made it official I don't think anybody else knows that no I don't see anybody going around in jerseys or anything like that but still they're our official team and uh, I'm delighted to be joined on the line by an Irish man living in Minsk himself Mr. Niall Doherty Niall thank you for joining us here on KCLR thank you very much it's a pleasure to be with you on this beautiful evening here in Minsk is it be- it's it's fantastic outside here as well I'm look I'm staring outside the window just wishing I was out playing soccer in it <laughs> Uh, great to hear. Niall, yeah, you have the Irish Partisan YouTube channel uh, where you're kind of documenting your life uh, living in Minsk. And uh, one of the... That's the, correct, yeah. Yeah, one of, the, one of the great things, I've been kind of looking at the channel and I've been looking at some of the uh, stuff that you're doing and looking at how nice of a country that it seems to be. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very nice place in many retrospects. It's very similar to Ireland in relation to uh, scenery. It's very green, um crystal clear, lots of lakes and rivers, and also uh, the cuisine as well, uh, potatoes, uh, it's a huge part of the cuisine, and uh, the people quite very, very similar as well, uh, you know, but they also like to drink and have a bit of crack and to socialize <laughs> as well, and they're huge into sport, just like uh, Irish people as well. Yeah, well, uh, that's what one of the things that kind of... Uh, just amazed me was that uh, they're so big into sport that it's still going ahead the Belarusian Premier League is still going ahead could you give us an indication as to why that uh, that has been allowed or uh, what has there been any consequences of it still going ahead well I think it's a general uh, it's a wider picture on what's happening uh, overall in in society you know uh, well the government here uh, decided not to shut down the economy uh, for a variety of reasons and I think the main reason was, uh, was to, that, you know, if you shut down the economy, uh, you would crash it. And also as well, uh, you know, they have a very good, uh, healthcare system here in Belarus. So it was a case of, uh, putting in some measures, uh, people self-isolating, people self-quarantining, the government, uh, using mass testing and, uh, also uh, allowing people to work from home, a bit of common sense. And uh, yes, yeah, sports uh, events have uh, have allowed have been allowed to go ahead. And uh, so far, we haven't seen any kind of uh, blowback from that in terms of uh, any anything serious happening. And it's great to still be able to to watch watch some type of soccer. Would you would you get to watch it much yourself over there? Is it very accessible in terms of TV? We know that the League of Ireland don't have any kind of television rights to sell, and there's not really much interest, unfortunately, from national broadcasters. Is it over in Belarus? Is it different? Absolutely different. The, uh, the, uh, as I said, as I mentioned, this is a sports mad country, and especially with winter sports, ice hockey, biathlon, and also uh, football as well. Uh, you know, it gets widespread coverage here in the local and in the, in the national media. Um, the, all the games are actually live on television, national television. I watch the games. I've gone to some of the games myself in the stadia. And uh, you, you can find the games live on TV and also live on YouTube as well. So there's a lot more, in terms of coverage, there's a lot more accessibility to sports in Belarus than they are in Ireland. And as a League of Ireland fan uh, and as a Waterford uh, FC fan myself, you know, I find it very, very uh, both frustrating and uh, quite surprising as well. Yeah, like even Demon Minsk, they, they have a capacity of over 22,000. They were playing, uh, they were playing Zenit St. Petersburg, which a lot of people know in the UEFA Cup. Uh, Bay Borisov were playing Arsenal last year in it. Alexander Hleb coming from Bay Borisov. So there seems to be a really good tradition, and they seem to be doing well in terms of at least getting to the European stages. Um, we know that. Dimino Minsk lost uh, famously, uh, blew away a four nil lead and lost eight five on aggregate in the next in the next game. But um, it, it seems to be a really great tradition, and they seem to be doing kind of well and prospering in at least getting to these uh, tournaments where Irish sides don't seem to do that. 
Yeah, well, it's for a very, very simple reason in that, like, um, number one, Belarus inherited uh, the Soviet system, the coaching system, the infrastructure, and they kept that up. And also, uh, the current government here uh, directly encourages active participation in sport and also directly um, funds uh, a lot of clubs uh, to coaches, to players, uh, the facilities, sporting facilities here are miles ahead from what we have in Ireland. You know, there are, in many neighborhoods, you can find uh, not only like fields, you can also find the um, different coaching academies, uh, you know, and many other different amenities that you simply wouldn't get in Ireland. And that's why, uh, you know, Belarus is a country that has, uh, well, overperformed in, on the international stage in terms of the Olympic Games. Uh, and also in, in club football as well, because they have facilities, they have the coaching, they have the expertise, they have the coaching staff, etc. Whereas in Ireland, that simply doesn't exist. And the simple reason is, is because, well, the GAA eats up pretty much uh, most of the, uh, of the sports funding, and that's all down to local politics. And uh, you mentioned ice hockey there being a big thing. Uh, it's kind of coming up and it's in its infancy here in Ireland. We have the Kilkenny Storm ourselves and a lot of them represent, uh, go on to represent Ireland in different different countries. But when you mention facilities, you know, there's no r- real rink or multi-sport facility that Kilkenny Storm have been fighting for for a long time. Yeah. So I'd imagine that the ice hockey is, is one of the top national sports. Yeah, it is. You can, you can find uh, an ice hockey palace or an ice hockey arena in pretty much uh, nearly in all, all of the big towns and cities here in Belarus. I mean, places like, for example, you could find one in Mogilov, which is in the eastern part of the country, uh, which has a population uh, slightly less than Cork. You can find a number of ice hockey palaces. You can find them pretty much in any town with a population of over 50,000, 60,000 people. And, of course, there are a lot of, that, a lot of those uh, here in Belarus. So in terms of facilities and amenities and access to sports, uh, Belarus just completely blows Ireland away um, in that in that regard, which is a pity, really, because you know Ireland is such a. It also it we are also uh, sports mad people, but uh, you know we can do a lot more. And when you hear stories like, for example, Katie Taylor, our Olympic gold medalist, having to get changed in the toilets of the local pub, uh, you know it just highlights the shocking, uh, you know, the the shocking. Um, you know, the lack shortage of uh, funding that happens on uh, in local sports. Um, you know, we're coming from a low base. I think we can we could do uh, much, much better. Uh, do, you, do you think in terms of uh, the, the fact that, uh, maybe it's the same in Belarus, but the, the likes of funding is stretched too thin in the sense that there's just so many sporting activities going on. You mentioned the GEA taking up the bulk of it, but the, you have the likes of soccer, you have so many other, basketball, you have so many other sports that are, are, are happening here. I'd imagine they're all happening in Belarus, but are you saying that there's more of, I don't know, a fair kind of way of giving it all out? Yes, there is. It's it's it's, uh, it's a lot more equal over here than it is in Ireland because if you, all you have to do, uh, you know, when it comes to sporting grants that the, that the government uh, gives out, you will see yourself that the GA gets uh, the bulk of the, of the actual sports funding, whereas the other sports like boxing, football, or soccer, um, you know, um, uh, basketball, uh, athletics, they have to pick up. They have to. They're basically left with the uh, the crumbs on the table. Whereas here, there's a lot more of an equal uh, share, um, definitely is. And, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, sports, uh, that you have the option here of winter sports that you don't have in Ireland. For example, here in Belarus, you know, uh, you have, not only do you have ice hockey, but you also have uh, biathlon, the Olympic, uh, Olympic Games, Winter Olympics biathlon. Um, you also have snowboarding, skiing. So they have those facilities there, and, uh, you know, in winter, you wouldn't have the option of going to these places and practicing a bit of snowboarding. Um, They even have artificial slopes here, uh, whereas in Ireland, you just don't have that at all. Yeah. Um, In in terms of uh, getting back to the soccer Belarusian league, are you following anyone in particular yourself? Um, Well, you know, I'm following... I've always had a a soft spot for uh, Dynamo Minsk. You know, they're in blue and white, white and blue, the same colour as Waterford, yeah. But they haven't had... um, They haven't had such a good season over the last... uh, Over the last while. And if you go back to the Soviet times, back to... 
1994 and 1991, um, Dynamo Minsk was the premier club um, in in Belarus because it was seen as the official club of uh, the Belarusian uh, Soviet Socialist Republic. And because of that, they got a lot of uh, support and backing off the states. And uh, they produced some fantastic players down to the years, um, most notably uh, Sergei Lenikov who was a member of uh, the Soviet Union uh, team that took, that took part in the 1982 and 1986 um, World Cup in, in Spain and Mexico. Um, but the problem was that when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, a lot of these clubs lost uh, state support. And, uh, you know, they needed, like, the big Moscow and the big Kiev clubs and the clubs in Leningrad or, or St. Petersburg. Uh, for um, competition and be competitive. And uh, it happened pretty much all over the, the Soviet Union. Now, the, the Russian and the Ukrainian clubs were able to cope with this because they had the means of population and the support and sponsorship to maintain the standards, like, for example, Dynamo, uh, Kiev, uh, Shakhtar, Donetsk, uh, Chernomorets. And then you have the big clubs in Russia, uh, you know, the big Moscow clubs, Torpedo Moscow, Locomotive, Spartak, Pesica, yeah. Uh, Dynamo, Spartak, Moscow, and then have Zenit St. Petersburg. But in the other smaller republics, like, for example, in, in Georgia, Dynamo, Dynamo Tbilisi, who incidentally played Waterford uh, in the <laughs> European Cup Winners' Cup in 1980 up until Combe Park. Um, clubs like them, clubs like um, Aras, Yerevan in Armenia, clubs like, for example, uh, Zalgiris in Lithuania, and Dynamo Minsk and... and um, uh, Pakmar, Tashkent, and Uzbekistan, all of these clubs all suffered, and they all went into terminal decline, because they lost, they lost the state support, and they were also deprived of the competition from the old Soviet League. So that has manifested itself in the overall decline of Dynamo Minsk and the emergence of uh, new clubs, for example, like uh, Bate Borisov, and now, for example, clubs like uh, Torpedo Jardina and uh, Dynamo Brest. Yeah, it, it's fascinating to listen to. I hope that uh, in terms of being the only kind of football that's really going on in this side of uh, the, the world, that it, it gets a boost and it gets kind of an added in an a- added revenue in, in, in terms of helping clubs, but gets more eyes on, on the game and hopefully it'll help them go forward. Yeah, it's it's been you know um, a lot of a lot of the, the fan groups have actually boycotted the games here because of what's happening because of concerns of safety. However, it, there's also there's always there, on the other hand, uh, it's actually benefited clubs because uh, you know the the Belarusian league being the only league um, that is now ongoing in all of Europe and one of only three in the entire world that is happening right now. It's actually been a, a huge boon to a lot of clubs. Whereas if if the government had decided to close down the league, a lot of these clubs would simply go bankrupt. So what has happened is that um, a lot of media attention has been spotlighted towards Belarus, and uh, many of these clubs have actually got uh, a lot of online support. Like For example, FK Slutsk, uh, who beat Dynamo Minsk yesterday in the Dynamo Stadium 2-1. 2-1 yeah. They're now... They're now being sponsored and supported by um, a group of uh, football fans in Australia, uh, of all countries. <laughs> so, and take the example, like, you know, the, the defending champions, Dynamo Brest, um, they are adopting um, a very innovative model. Like, for example, in their stadium in Brest, uh, they have uh, um, erected mannequins in the stands. And on these mannequins, you have like photos of uh, fans from around the world who have uh, sponsored a thief <laughs> or who have paid a thief to support the club with their faces. So, kind of, if you ever watch the game, they have these mannequins in the stands of uh, fans from uh, pictures, photos of fans from all over the world, and uh, it's quite an innovative thing as well. And it's what has happened is that uh, it's actually saved a lot of clubs. Like, for example, um, let me give you one example. And that was that um, FK Slutsk because they were in financial, uh, they were facing financial ruin. And when this thing came along, then uh, they got a lot of support online, and uh, you know it's been a huge boon uh, to many of these clubs. And now they're top of the table. Well, now look, I have to hit an ad, but it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Uh, a fountain of knowledge over there, and I hope you're keeping safe, and I hope uh, Belarusian football prospers. Thank you very much.
Pleasure Thank speaking you. to you. That's Niall Doherty from Irish Partisan. Go check it out on YouTube. Fascinating insight into living over in Minsk. La Hard Sunday Scoreline. Your music, your sports. With thanks to the full range of Skoda vehicles at La Hearts, the home of Skoda in Kilkenny. Lahearts.ie. KCLR.